In today's lecture, we're looking at uh, the different branches of government. Uh, we want to understand really their function in society. So it is important for us to understand the three branches of government, why that is the pillar of any government and why that is so critical today in modern governance uh, for uh, stability, for accountability, for probity, but also to ensure that the people have uh, good governance. All right, so we're going to take a look at this idea and this concept of, uh, of the, the branches of government and begin to have a deeper understanding as to the context in which they operate in society, but more importantly, how they impact society uh, within the context of sustainability and democracy. All right, so you have an image here. Now you're seeing that image here. Now, again, we talked about this uh, briefly in the previous lecture. And, uh, and today's lecture is really to provide some details on the whole idea of, you know, branches of government. All right, so let's take a look at this closely. Uh, students, uh, here you have an image, uh, an interesting image. I thought to change it up a little bit uh, so that uh, we uh, have something different. So we have an interesting uh, image here. Now, don't ask me what these fruits are because I have no idea. Uh, the image just, you know, uh, is appealing, so I thought to use it uh, for to illustrate this point. So we have an image here, uh, and it's a very interesting image, and it, I think it presents a very, it makes a great uh, example of the three branches of government, right? So here, the first thing I want to point out, students, is is this right here, right? Is this right here? What is this? This right here that uh, you see is the stem. Right and and why is this important within the context of society, and within the context of government and governance? Right, right thinking that in, in that mode, uh, why is that important? Why is this term important? Right, the role of this term is to hold. Right, it has multiple roles. Uh, one of it is to hold. So, uh, is strength. Right, so this term is strength. Uh, but also to provide opportunity for others to grow or for something to grow, right? So society grows. So production, right? This is productivity. Let's put that here. This is production or productivity, right? So something grows. And in this context of society, society grows, right? Because it becomes the pillar. It becomes the pillar. It becomes, you know, something, the cornerstone, so to speak the whole society. And that is the concept of the branches of government. The branches of government hold society. How? Because they hold each other accountable. And when that happens, you have efficiency. Uh, you have, you know, efficiency in society and effectiveness in society as well. So the STEM becomes a critical piece and the centerpiece of uh, the whole concept of branches of government and the whole concept of governance, right? So the STEM holds, the STEM, you know, provides opportunity for production, right? Productivity, you know, something grows on the STEM, uh, but it's also the pillar, right? Let's put that here as well. And this is actually the core. It's also the pillar of society. So on this STEM then, you have the three branches of government, right? The three branches of government. And the STEM again represents the people. The people are the ones holding the branches of government. So on this, you have the judiciary, right? Judiciary as, as one of the branches of government. Uh, this is the executive. Let's spell it well. This is executive. And this is the legislature, right? The legislature. In some countries, they call it parliament. So let's put parliament here as well, right? Let's put parliament here as well. In the UK, it's parliament. In Canada, it's parliament. Uh, in the US, it's legislature. All right, so now we have the three branches of government. And we we'll begin to understand the functions of these branches of government, right? So the primary function of the judiciary is this. Please take note, students. So interpret. Right, interpret. This is interpret laws. Does the judiciary make laws? The answer is no. The judiciary does not make laws, but the judiciary interpret the laws that are made by the legislature. Right? So they make 
laws. They are lawmakers. That's what they call them. They are lawmakers. They make laws. Their role is to make laws. When they make those laws, if those laws conflict with other laws, existing laws, it could be on the state level or it could be on the federal level, it could be at the local level, uh, whatever the case may be. Usually, federal law takes precedence over all laws uh, if in societies that practice different levels of government, which would be federal, state, or provincial, and local. Uh, but the role of the judiciary then is to interpret the laws that have been made by the legislature. That's their role, right? So the judiciary has a very special role to make sure that there is there is sound interpretation of laws, that the, and the laws are not conflicting, the laws are not contravening one another, and the constitution is clear, and to provide interpretation for any section uh, of the constitution that is unclear, that needs clarification, and citizens can go for redress uh, in the Supreme Court, ask for an opinion, ask for interpretation, etc. But their main function is to interpret laws. Please take note, students. And who makes the laws? The legislature. The parliament make the laws. In some countries, it's called the National Assembly as well. They make the law of the land, right? So here, usually, you have a chief judge, right? Usually, or justice, right? And here, you have you know, the uh, leaders of the uh, legislature, right? It could be speakers, uh, speaker of the house. Uh, it could be a, a majority leader of this of the Senate or president of the Senate. Or in some cases, some countries that have uh, just one chamber. It could be you know the speaker of the House of Commons, for example. Uh, in Canada, it's, it's called the House of Commons. In the in Britain, it's called the House of Commons, etc. Right? Uh, in the U.S., it's called you know the, it's called Congress. All right, so the executive then is here, and this is where you find the president or the head of government, and sometimes the head of state as well, right? And sometimes the head of state as well. This is where you find them. Uh, and the role of the executive is to enforce, this is enforce, enforce laws. Right, the laws that have been made by the as by the legislature, the laws that have been made by the legislature, are enforced by the executive. Now, don't forget, the legislature cannot enforce its laws, and the judiciary cannot enforce laws as well. They can interpret, but they cannot enforce, uh, and that means the executive then has to enforce the laws. Right. So, for example. If the judiciary strikes down a law, uh, and the executive has to make sure that uh, there is compliance amongst the citizens in society, there is compliance. That's the role of the executive, right? So the executive makes sure that there is compliance to uh, you know enacted laws, etc. Now this is very critical, right? And this is the the role of function of government where you have the three branches of government. Now, there's another point that you should note, students, and that is the question or the point of equality. What does that mean in this context? Equality. It means that this branch, this branch, and this branch are equal. They are all equal, right? So, the doctrine of equality, and this is known as the doctrine, let's put that here, the doctrine of equality. This branch, this branch, and this branch are equal. No one has power over the other. If one has power over the other, then, of course, they are not equal at that point, and that is not good for democracy, and that's not good for governance, because it means that one will dominate over the other. But they are co-equal, right? So, co-equal. These three branches are co-equal. That means the judiciary doesn't report to the executive. The executive doesn't report to the judiciary. The judiciary doesn't report to the legislature. The legislature doesn't report to the executive or the judiciary. They are independent. Right? They are independent. In some countries, the executive may appoint judges. 
and those judges have to be approved by the legislature then after that process they become they are they're totally independent well even during that process they're independent uh, but it provides the very sacred duty of checks and balances right so let's put that here again now a couple of things to note students uh, the first one is right uh, equality the doctrine of equality this is equality and the second one is checks and balances right so they check one another the judiciary checks the executive the executive checks the, the uh, legislature the legislature checks the executive and legislature checks the judiciary and they check just check you know one another what does that mean really it means that uh, the judiciary can call the executive to order for example executive you know uh, introduces a bill and that bill is against the constitution well the judiciary says well you cannot introduce this bill because it is it is unlawful it is unlawful right and that's checks and balances and and the legislature checks the uh, the executive when the executive you know brings the budget to the legislature they can scrutinize the budget they can uh, reject the budget or they accept the budget check some balances to make sure that all of them are working in tandem they have to work in tandem it's just like uh, a car engine they have the engine the parts of the engine uh, have to work in tandem the fan belt and the radiator and the and the uh, the calibrator the pistons and everything have to work hand in hand they have to work in tandem for the car to keep moving similarly these branches of government have to work in tandem for society to keep moving for society to keep moving for governance to be effective and efficient as well so these are the three branches of government right judiciary uh executive and you have of course here the legislature so let's clear this up so that we have a, a better view here so here again judiciary right executive executive and legislature now again in some places uh it's called the parliament in some places it's called national assembly and so forth and once again why right, they are equal this is the doctrine of equality they provide checks and balances right i explain what that means making sure that uh, they, they hold themselves accountable, right? So checks and balances, in other words, accountability. Accountability, right, to one another. What is the role of judiciary once again? To interpret, right? Don't forget because it, judiciary uh, is very easy to make the mistake that they make the laws. They don't make the laws, they interpret the laws. Uh, the executive enforces, right? This is enforce, enforces the laws. And those laws that have been enforced and interpreted are made right here by the legislature. That's what we mean by the three branches of government. Co-equal, checks and balances. And by doing checks and balances, well, there's accountability. And of course, society moves smoothly. That is the idea. That's the concept of checks and balances. And, and we begin to understand uh, these checks and balances a concept that is so prominent in democracy and that's why democracy flourishes and that's why democracy really uh, is a government for the people by the people because don't forget the stem right is the people right here the stem is the people the people are right here and the people hold the three branches because they right they vote to elect the executive they vote to elect members of the legislature and of course members of the legislature in some countries like the united states for example approve the judges right right and based on the people's will and wishes because they represent the people right you can also say that the judges and justices are also appointed by the people through their legislatures through their representatives in the legislature it's important for us to have this context it is important for us to have this lens to understand the role each one plays, and more importantly, the impact 
they have on society in democratic governance. All right, so we're going to take a look at this closely uh, in the next lecture and begin to understand the origin and, and the idea of branch of government, of the branches of government. Uh, how did it come about? What is the history behind it? And we'll begin to understand its important role in society.